Nice to meet you. Hey. Nice to meet you. Us too. Nice. What's your name? Matthew. I'm Norena. Hi, nice to meet you. Danny. Martha. My name is Kareem. Kareem, nice to meet you. Shira. Emma. Emma. My story is that uh, I was working for a startup mm -hmm. and we got acquired. Nice. And it's been super boring since then. I did meet someone who inspired me. It was the aunt of my ex-boyfriend. She, um, she once in her life, she completely, she left her whole life in Venice and moved to Mexico. And she started um, working really, really hard even if, to find her job and all of that. Even if she had no possibility in the end and then she turned out just great. So well, that's really inspiring. And that's what you're trying to follow too? Well, I don't know if I want to do her sort of life, but, but you I did know... come to New York from Italy, so Yes, I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to give it all I've got to get to my schools. One thing I'm going through right now is that like my friend is staying at my house and like whenever I have friends over, she always acts like everything that I do to her is automatically their fault. Like she's jealous because oh. she wants, like you know how children get jealous because they want you to spend time with them. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So I guess the minute I got back here, all the aggression from my childhood came back. Because in public schools in New York, there's a lot of fighting and abuse. Okay. That being said, I had a frown on my face the whole entire time while I was at the club. I'll just leave everybody alone, sit down, enjoy the music. And then this girl came up to me. Uh, she started making me laugh. Got me really comfortable. Told me she was gonna come back, never came back. Another girl sits next to me, starts grilling me, because I'm angry. And then I see this girl with red hair and a full figure. For some reason, I could not help but smile. Nice. <laughs> I get up and I pursue the girl before she even gets to sit down. And I ask her, what is her name? And I tell her I was looking at her silhouette because I am an artist. She gets up and she's going to hear me. I get really close so she can hear me. And I tell her she's beautiful and that she's a goddess. That's just an expression yeah. for what's here on earth. Next thing you know, she starts making out with me. So I come from a single um, parent household, so my mom immigrated from Peru when uh, she was 27 and she had me like 12 years later. Um, I always say that like I'm not sure how she made it on her own just because um, we went, my brother and I went to, public, uh, to private school our whole lives and um, I go to Boston University now. So. Um, and you know, we live in Queens and we kind of just have a very humble family, but um, you know, growing up with my mom, I, I was very like fortunate to just have like that strong influence um, surrounding us, but uh, you know, just considering the rhetoric that's happening now in politics and just yeah. like current events, like I think it's important for people to know that like you know, people immigrate to this country to, you know, follow their dreams. Like, I know my mom always wanted, like, her kids to graduate from, like, a good, you know, just graduate from university. And the fact that it's, like, a pretty, like, good one, um, like, means everything. The fact that I don't truly think that she was a recipient of the American dream, I think her work made the American dream possible for my brother and I, just because she worked, like, her entire life, like, basically almost 24 so like 15 hours a day sometimes wow. yeah so I feel like my responsibility now that I'm like a recipient of the American dream is kind of to just um, make sure that she has a chance to live like what she wanted to do like maybe um, I know she loves cooking so like once I start making money I could like put her in some cooking classes or something nice. of that yeah. sort yeah nice. my story I come from Mexico City to have like a curse of entrepreneurship. Nice, do you like it over here in New York? Yes, well, it's the first day I come here into Manhattan because we're staying at Brooklyn. Okay. But yeah, I like it, I like it, I love it. So, well, I was born in Guatemala and then we moved to Mexico. I've been living in Mexico for 11 years. And 
When I was 18 years old, I entered to college, and I take the Monterrey in Mexico and now we came to New York because we all won a scholarship that the Mexican government gave us to come here and make entrepreneurial things so um, so this is my first time in New York and I'm so happy and I'm so excited we're like walking all around we're living in Brooklyn mm -hmm. so we come every day here to NYU and we're trying to make like a project here. I am a mathematician. Did my master's here at Hunter and then I went upstate and got my PhD. And now I teach other students to hopefully be other mathematicians. I think the funniest thing about when I usually tell someone I'm a mathematician is I hear their horror story when they first started hating mathematics. Oh, okay. Well, tell us a wonderful story about what made you love mathematics. Um, so my dad was also a math professor and so I just always liked it. And the thing that I like the best is that things work out nice in mathematics. Yes, there's lots of rules and crazy stuff, but in mathematics, all the rules make things work out beautiful. And so to a mathematician, you look at a proof that's done well and uses a beautiful concept in mathematics. It's like looking at a work of art. So back when I was in kindergarten, uh -huh. I had a marble stuck all the way up in my nose where I couldn't breathe. Really? Yeah. How did that get stuck in there? Um, so I was at daycare one day and I happened to be playing with doing some crafts uh -huh. and I just saw it. I saw like this pretty marble and I wanted to take it home so I did and I in my head at the time my mentality was that I would get arrested for taking marble home. Yeah. I was thinking about how my kids would be um, be really sad about that. I, I, anyways, <laughs> I get home and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta hide this somewhere because, because my dad started coming upstairs, so I was like, oh, I gotta, <laughs> I have to go find, I have to go find a place to hide this. Mm -hmm. I was just like, wait. I was like, I know the perfect place. So uh, he started coming upstairs and I put it up my nose. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> wow. And then, um, so he, I was like, okay, what's that? So I stuck it up further. And it just got stuck oh God. all the way. That's and pretty so, dangerous. Yeah. And I had a... Did you look yeah. funny? Like you had a big Oh, yeah. Nose? I had a, it was like all the way up here, actually. I don't know oh how that happened. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> how big and was the marble? It was like that big. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then we went to the emergency room and ended up paying like $200 to get it out. Wow. Yeah, just with like this machine. So. Well, at least you're you're fine now, yeah. right? So the two hundred dollars yeah. don't matter. But... but that was the only time I've ever been sent to the emergency room. Yeah, I could I could see, kind of see your nose is still. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, I'm just I, I ran from police on the west side at oh. four in the morning in a BMW X3. Since since I was a kid, I, I just had a strong thing for racing, you know. And um, <laughs> um, they didn't catch me. There's no way I'm gonna live my life basic. You know what I mean? You only live once. That's good. That's good. I like that. You only that. live once. There's no way I'm gonna live check to check. I'm from the hood. I know some people who won't even leave the hood. You know? Yeah. They'll prefer to stay on the block all day. It's it's so much, man. You know, just stay focused. Do you? You know? You know, make that money. You know what I mean? Explore. You know, awesome. meet people. I just moved here in January from Philadelphia. I got my degree in public health, and then I decided to become a professional dancer. So the purpose of this very small story is that if you have a dream, then don't put it aside because anyone says that it's either unachievable or unrealistic. Just go for it even though it's scary and you're going to be really unstable. That's the best part and it's worth all of the anxiety and stress. I have a story regarding a flight that I took uh, overseas a couple of weeks ago. Uh, basically, um, just regular flights, you know, just going up Punta Cana. Uh, just for vacation for a couple of weeks. I got on the flight. Uh, my mom was with me. Um, she's with Hajib, you know, she was at a job. Yeah. And uh, basically, everything was fine, going well and whatnot. And um, like, you know how you know, they give you food on the flight, right? Yeah. Like, I asked the attendant, like, uh, can we get like, water, you know? So, like, I asked her once, twice, three times. The first time I got up, I'm like, yeah, what's going on? Can I get some water here? Yeah. And she was just like, yeah, I'll be right back. Literally, this is like six, six hour flight. 
after the fourth hour, I'm just like, are you, are you serious right now? Nah. They're not getting, so I went all the way in the back and got water for myself. And then I bought it to my mom and she came up to me. She's like, you're not supposed to go back there and get it yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've been asking you for four hours. She's like, she like blatantly told me, no, you didn't. Why do you think she was doing that? To be honest with you, I'm not sure. To this day, I'm like still confused. Everyone was like treated fine except me and my mom. The only difference is my mom was the only one who was wearing a job. I'm feeling old. I'm gonna miss this. That explains it, I guess. Yeah, it was weird. TMS. TMS, all right. Too much swag. It stands for too much swag. Too much swag? All right, so what's your story? Story? Yeah. Uh, I'm getting money. You're getting money? Because I have swag. That's and awesome. I, I know big snub me. You, you know big celebrities? I know. I, I want to be a celebrity. Oh, I think you're going to be a celebrity after this video. Because I'm gangster. You're gangster. That's you're awesome, gangster, man. you know all the bitches love me. It's really? about being a G. Yep. Every, every move I make, uh -huh. every step I take, uh -huh. is about getting a million. Nice, nice. I have been lost in my life. I've been stressed out, you yeah. know, all, all the time. But yeah. now I know what I want. I want to be a G. I want to be a gangster. I want to show the whole world how to get love. And that's awesome. For being man. a thug, thug life. That's cool. So I'm gonna show you some love, and I hope you get that, bro. Yeah. That's of awesome. I, I have a lot of bitches. That's good, man. Because I'm a good dancer. You're a good dancer. That's I'm awesome. Good dancer. Yeah. Every every step I take is about gangster. That's cool. That's cool. I'm the only gangster in the world. That's why it's made me so special. That's, that's why bitches love me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Every move I make about love. Awesome, it's man. Plain simple. I hope I meet you again. It's it's amazing to meet you. Sure. Yeah. I, I will be famous. You, you are. You are going to be famous. I, I, I think you are. I will make a million. Be famous. Yeah. Have money and bitches. Everybody will be that's talking about some, me. Yeah, it's I, I'll about be on the on the news. <laughs> I'll be on the news. I'll be famous. You heard Everybody first. know know me. About be, I'm a big man in the hood. Nice. I'm it's all about hood. me. All right, got it, man. Nice meeting you, bro. All right. Take it easy, bro. All right. In gangster. Yes. Uh, All right, famous. bro. Thank you, you man. Are going to put this on YouTube? Or? Yeah, we're going to put it on YouTube. Good. Thank you so much, Good. man. Appreciate it. Thanks for your story. All right, stop. Stop recording.